talk for five minutes. Praise the Lord. It is my era of an, uh, it is dawn of a new era. Yeah, um, please pardon me if I don't get it right, but I want to tell you there is God here. Hallelujah. If you have not been serious with God, I tell you there is God here. I sat back there and I was watching testimonies. If I should take microphone and begin to talk about the testimonies of what God has done through the man of God here, I met him on the internet. We are seeing for the first time on Friday when I came in here. And he has been a tremendous blessing to my life. So when I came around and I see every one of you, I am jealous. If you are staying with a kind of man like this, and you see him every Sunday, some of you, you have one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, I tell you, you are blessed. Amen. It's been a wonderful time since Friday. Himself, the family, they accepted us fine. And the people that came for, uh, for our program, the parents, do we have them around here? I know they can never remain the same. I was given just five minutes. God gave me this mandate. I have a thriving HR job. I started my career with Guarantee Trust Bank in Human Resources Department as a young man. I was going when God paused me and said, this is what I want you to go and do. Go and raise geniuses for me in this generation. Along the line, I was doing it on the internet. He got to know me on the internet. He called me once and he started responding to me. He bought all my materials and he picked interest in me. I have been to Faith Academy in Lagos to train all the teachers. And it is not stopping there. I am going to Goshen. And <laughs> this week, it has been a tremendous blessing. But I want to tell you something. Ask the parents that came yesterday. Every day, we receive testimonies. Children that were hopeless, God is restoring hope to them. Amen. I was at the first service with the teenagers, and as I was talking to them, some of them were crying. If you have children that attended that first service, I tell you the dawn of a new era has come again for that child. I want to say a big thank you, sir. I glorify the name of God, the God of Oyedepo. Papa has been my mentor. I told him yesterday, if there is any book of Baba that I have not read, maybe I am not aware that that book exists. Any day I set my book on any of his book, I buy and I read. I bless the God of Oyedepo, and I have been blessed coming to this place. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. So whatever it will cost you to have this book, whether you are married now or you are planning to marry or you are over married, <laughs> make sure you buy it. I'm not joking, no. Make sure you buy it. Whether you don't marry or you never marry or you have over married, please make sure you buy the book and have it now. After third service, Whatever is remaining, I will buy it and I will dash it. Not here. I will dash outside. In Jesus' name. If you like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the first service, we looked at profitable stewardship is rooted in love. And I'd like us to understand that not all service is profitable and not all service is rewardable. Nobody goes to work 
and come back at the end of the month not being paid. At the end of the month, it is not only you that is expecting, your family is also expecting. Am I saying the truth? Apostle Paul said that your labor of love will not go unrewarded. But hear this. If your stewardship must be profitable, there is what you must do so that it will not look as if you are exerting energy, serving, and yet you are going back empty-handed. God is not a tax master. Neither is he a wicked God. He is under an oath, you shall serve, I shall bless. I told us in the first service, I learned this principle from one of my friends. I don't have grace to do what I will not be paid for. If it is sacrifice, I can give sacrifice. But hear me, God did not call me to punish me. He did not call me to suffer me. He did not call me to shamify me. He called me to decorate me. He called me to raise me above others. Likewise you. Our service to God is not to reduce us. Our service to God is not to give men an opportunity to make a mockery of us. But rather, our service to God is to cause us to stand out in every area of life. So if stewardship must be profitable, hear this, you must give the seed of love that has been planted in you an opportunity to grow. There is a seed of love in everyone that has been born again. Romans 5 and verse 5. Scripture said, And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That seed of love is what creates a comfortable atmosphere for you to serve God. What does it mean for the seed of love to dwell in your heart? <laughs> Scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant you your heart's desire. Delight. So you serve with delight. You serve with excitement. You usher with excitement. You sing with excitement. You do your sanctuary work with excitement. Everything you do, you do with excitement. I tell you, preaching is not, <laughs> it's not my moyo. Anytime I think of message, I think creativity. Lord, how can I present this thing in a better way that it will better somebody's life? I'm not just looking for outline to preach. The outline is just like 10 lines. What will I be talking in 10 lines? For a service, first service, second service, third service. You must be, I must be creative, so I must engage God. I must engage God. Lord, how do I package this message? How do I present this? How do I present this? If you are serving as if you are under punishment, you will be punished. You are getting punishment. Whatever you are doing, you do it because you know who you are doing it for. Like I said in the first service, some people come to church with bone face, with bone heart, as if they are angry with someone. Church is a place where you go and you are relieved. Not where you go and you carry load. If 
If your heart is not doing it right, you don't stand a chance to be rewarded. Whatever you are doing, watch it. Man is not watching you. God is watching you. God is watching your heart the way you are doing what he wants you to do. He's watching your heart. God is watching your heart. That's why not all labor, scripture says in all labor there is profit. Not all laborers in the church are profiting. Not everybody is profiting. Even though the profit for all is for all. Scripture again say the, pro the profit of the earth is for all. For all. In all labor there is profit. Are you profiting? If you are not profiting, the problem is not with God, the problem is with you. Why are we not profiting? In the first service, we looked at too many issues. The issue of strife, the issue of bitterness, the issue of offenses, the issue of pride. Should I say this? Many have arrival mentality. The service they are talking about is not for people like us. We are too big to sweep chair. Big where? Who gave you big? Singing is for all these ones that are coming up. We are, we are matured now. We should be giving them direction. See your hand. See your hand to give direction. You know I will face you every time. Now, I was listening to the testimony of Funka Dejumo. The sister served her very well. She sponsored her wedding, did everything. All of a sudden, nothing was working. She was expecting it has not come. He said, Lord, I pray for others. They are blessed. What about my sister? He said, your sister used to serve in the choir. But now she no longer come. Even when she comes, she comes late. And not only that, she no longer goes for rehaza. She looked at the sister. You have stopped going for choir rehaza? Start the thing you used to do before. In less than two weeks, she became pregnant. Some of you have overgrown. You are now God's uncle and God's auntie. <laughs> it's not only them who some of you two that are seated in the congregation. You are now God's uncle and God's auntie. Assistant Holy Ghost. <laughs> so for you to serve now, self they key you. There are pro many, many people's problem in church is over pride. Over pride. Over pride. And she said, anytime the angels come to give her her blessing, she's not there. Anytime the angel come to give her her blessing, she's not there. Where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. Should I tell you something? Where your heart is, you don't check time. Am I saying the truth? When your heart is in a place, distance is not a problem. When your heart is in a matter, distance is not a problem, time is not a problem. Go and check it. Distance is not a problem, time is not a problem. When your heart is in a matter, distance is not a problem, time is not a problem. No wonder David said, the day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. Kill your pride so that you can be blessed. Kill your pride! All oh, galen 
Corinthians, who has bewitched you? He said, did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? Whatever you know that is making you feel puffed up now, you still know in parts. Paul said, for we know in parts. Whatever you know now is in parts. And you may be doing it and feeling that, uh, you know, you can form spirituality, but God knows you inside out. You can form it. That's why I say having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. If service must remain profitable, don't kill your affection for your God. You are not serving church. You are not serving pastor. Profitable stewardship is rooted in undying love. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's just like your love for your wife is, is ordained to remain ever fresh, ever new, ever exciting. The day you begin to get tired of your wife, you go catch another one outside. The day you begin to call your husband this old thing, you go see one new thing. Yes? The day your love for God begins to fade, Satan will give you an alternative. But if you want to remain ever profiting in this kingdom, the, the kind that Papa said, I've never known a better last year, please, I beg you, reaffirm your love for God. Rekindle your love for God. Our profiting in this kingdom can be affected anytime we are distracted. What are the things that causes distraction and thereby quench the love in your heart? You are too giving to side comments. Shabi, I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. I'm your pastor. I want your response. Are you sure I'm your pastor? If there is any person that they talk about more, is it me or you? True of us. If there's any person they talk about more, the good and the bad, na me. But like I said in the first service, what you think and say about me is your problem. It's your own problem. Oh? What I think and say about myself is the real problem. We made reference to Numbers 13 and verse 32. Ten spies we are sent to the land of Canaan. Eight came back with an evil report. Man, the land where we see there and a good place. Oh. <laughs> but the people where we see there, man, we see ourselves small in our own eyes. Not in their eyes. So how you view yourself is different from how people view you. God will not judge you how people view you. He will judge you how you view yourself. You get too distracted. Pastor, are you hearing what they are saying about me? And from what they are saying about me, you will just carry one block and put it in your chest. You begin to feel bad. I won't go to service today. I won't go for choir rehearsal. I won't go for covenant hour of prayer. 
Monday and Friday prayer cancel. <laughs> Should I tell you something? God will not miss you. Your place, another will take. Fast, fast. Any day you feel that you miss church, God did not miss you. Satan intentionally kept you. Don't go, you don't go too much, self. This prayer thing is getting too much. I told you that this prayer thing is getting too much. And before you know what's happening, <laughs> your spiritual life begins to go down. Now hear me. Whatever you are doing is what is triggering the profiting. You shall serve, I shall bless. As you are serving, you are triggering more blessing, more blessing. Much more importantly, when you are serving with your heart. Service is just like playing football. You know, in every football, we have 22 players. And we have over 20,000 spectators. Now we have, um, is it VROS referee? VROS referee, five. One center referee. How many likes, man? Two likes, man. So altogether, you have eight referees. So you are playing the ball against 20,008 persons. And hear me, the people watching the football, they play the ball more than the people playing the ball. Am I saying the truth? If you do your head like this, if I don't score. <laughs> Am I saying something to somebody? <laughs> oh, Victor Moses disappoints me. If you don't touch the thing like this. But you don't know, as at that time, whether he was caged by a muzzle pool or ancestral spirit. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? Yes, sir. You don't know. You don't know whether his reflex was working well that time or not. You don't even know whether he saw the ball or he didn't see the ball. Oh, if to say not me. Hey. It is easy to judge, but very difficult to act. It's easy to judge. Until you wear the shoe the person is wearing, you don't have the right to judge the person. But you know what? Every footballer on the pitch has been trained ignore the voice of the people. Because if you go by the voice of spectators, you can be way down. They can woe you down. If you go by their voice, coach, we'll just surrender. We'll just give them the match. May they win, may they win. There's what they call home advantage. But did it work when Russia played uh, Croatia? You know what, oh, they made up their mind they must win. Anytime they carry the ball, their coach will say, Oh, yeah, they shout. They shout like Mumu. They shout. But it didn't stop the Croatians from playing out their hearts. When you serve, serve out your hearts. It didn't stop them. They made sure they give in their leg giving their sweat, giving their might, but they made up their mind that they will not fail in this match. Did they fail? Allow commentators to do their job. Allow evil speakers to keep speaking on. Allow mockers to mock you so that God can make you. Those are the distractions. Association of holy dickiness. Have you heard what they are saying? 
They don't know that we are the ones in charge in this church. May the Lord deliver you. Association of senior brethren. Should I tell you something? You didn't come to the church because of them. You came because God brought you. Is it God that brought you? Serve your God. Ignore distraction. The only thing I want to tell you, make sure what they are saying is not right. Make sure that what they are saying does not have any atom of truth. If it does not, at the end, they will end in shame. You will end in glory. Keep your focus. Don't allow people's comments to decide whether you will serve God with the whole of your heart or you will withdraw. You came to church to be lifted. They don't have the power to lift you. The power of lifting is in the hand of God. Refuse to be distracted. If what people say kills people, if I don't get heart attack, I tell you the truth. But you know what? Jesus was on the way to the cross to die for sinners. The people who was going to die for, they are the ones speaking against him. They are the ones speaking against him. But scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Hear me? Ignore it. Tell your neighbor, ignore. ignore. Hear this again. If you wait for when people will speak well of you, before you begin to serve God well, rapture will take place before that day go come. Jesus said, woe is you when men speak well of you. Don't allow all this yeah, 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 yeah distraction to determine how far you will go in serving God. No! You are giving yourself unnecessary concern which is not bringing profit to you. Every day you come to church, you are, your heart is heavy. Your love has taken over me. Say which love? They will say, which love? And they tell you, say something, they do me, they say, your love has taken over. <laughs> you are the one doing yourself. I'm telling you, you are the one doing yourself. You are the one doing yourself. Nobody is doing you. The earlier you bury those things, the better it is for your service. The better it is for your service. I've never seen where commentators we are giving the trophy. Have you ever seen where commentators win gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal, talking award? You don't win award by talking. So, take your eyes off. You are free to talk. I hope you know talking is free. What did I say? Talking is free. Everybody is free to talk. But let not the talking stop your serving. Let not the talking demoralize your heart. If you set your, heart, your ear to hear, you go hear things. Ignore those things. Keep your eyes on the goal. Keep your eyes on the profit. Now hear this. Profit is a motivation. When you know that this thing is going to profit you more, you get excited to serve more. Lastly on this, every time you go into competition, get ready to carry a bag of jealousy. 
Every time you go into competition, if you sing for competition, I want to make sure say our shiner. You have you have limited yourself. We are not here to outshine anybody. We are only competing with our own destiny. You are on a race with your own destiny, not to compete with anybody. Competition is a limitation. Do you know why? It will begin to breed jealousy and envy. Bitterness in your heart. Whether it's in choir or usher or prayer band or CCU anywhere, you will see that bitter seed will begin to I notice you now. When some people are singing, some will just... They will sing, oh. They will be doing like... Meaning, if not me, they are. You will go handle the microphone. Even see the person where they even take the solo self. See how they do like a... <laughs> I've been there before. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's supposed to they demonstrate the song. You just do like this. <laughs> Jealousy. Jealousy. You don't get rewarded by being jealous. You get rewarded by serving. If you can't compliment someone for what he's doing, you can't grow above the person. Write it down, I said so. Please, God wants to bless you. Don't be a hindrance to your own self. God wants to move you higher than you think. Don't be a hindrance to your own self. Don't be a hindrance to your own self. You are your first problem. You may be thinking that others are your problem. No. You are the one placing the limit on how far you can be blessed. How far you can go. How far you can increase. When these things are taken care of, you easily flow with the love of God. You don't struggle to walk. You don't struggle to be blessed. You don't struggle to go forward. Things will just be working. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Take jealousy away. Take away pride. Take away all this talking, 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 talking. When will you overcomment? Anytime someone is doing something, you have one thing to say. Can't you keep quiet for once? Even scripture say a fool, even when he keeps quiet, is regarded as a wise man. When will you be a wise man? You were never called to be a referee in another man's life. You were never called to be a referee in another man's matter. Be business minded so that God can bless you. Be business minded. Be business minded. If you are not business minded, I want to tell you, you have a problem. You are not here for God. You are here for people. And lastly, before we move over to the possessing your possession, have good way towards people. Tell your neighbor, have good way towards people. People you wish well, you don't speak against them, you pray for them. People you wish well. People you wish well. You don't tear them. You pray for them. People you wish well. You don't set trap for them to fall. You don't speak shame against them. But rather you pray, Lord, glorify yourself in this person's life. People you wish were. People you wish were. You don't circulate their name for evil. People you 
you wish well, you are not an evil broadcasters against their life. How can you be speaking evil against me and you are telling me you wish me well? It's a lie. But you know, whatever you wish any person is what echoes back to your life. Ah, that's the truth. It fires back to you. A hundredfold returns. But that will not be your portion. From today, whatever is making your life unprofitable in service, by this communion, you will be healed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Faith is a major factor for possessing your possession. As you grow in faith, you grow in delivery. You grow in possession. God cannot bless you. God cannot increase you above the level of your faith. Whatever belongs to you in life and in destiny, you need a certain degree of violence to possess them. The enemy will not surrender to anybody by dialogue. He will only surrender to you by violence. Take a look at this scripture. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24. Deuteronomy 2 verse 24. Rise ye up. Take your journey and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sihon the Amorite king of Hishbon and his land begin to possess it comma and contend with him in battle how will I be contending for what you say I should possess but God is not confused scripture said again for a great door and effectual is open unto us but there are many adversaries so if you must possess you must contend if you don't contend, you will not possess. I heard Papa say some time ago, people that are always passive, they are always cheated. What does it mean to be passive? Always quiet. One day God will do it. I don't need to struggle. God will do it in his own time. But scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. Yes, it is your right, but they are not delivered to you because it is your right, but because you forced it. There are many things that are our right that we are denied of now, that we are lacking now. Things are not given to you because it is your right, but because you forced it to be delivered. I want you to hear this. The violence of faith is the key, the major key. In the third service, we are going to be praying for every Goliath to go down. <laughs> there are Goliaths that must go down. If not, you will not possess that blessing. Faith is the major key for any possession to become a reality. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whereby we shall be able to quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. If you lack aggression, you will be denied of your possession. If you lack aggression, 
If you lack aggression, you will be denied of your possession. If you lack aggression, you will be denied of your possession. Your possession will be denied you if you lack aggression. If you lack aggression, you will be displaced even from your place of blessing. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Tell your neighbor, I have suffered enough. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. Faith makes you a forceful taker. A forceful taker. Do you know the day your eyes turn red, your enemy will advise himself? I'm telling you. Faith makes you daring. You dare what is commanded. Faith makes you confrontational. If you don't confront, you won't conquer. You must be confrontational. On every issue of your blessing. Violence is rooted in trust. If I perish, I perish. But this blessing, I must take it. Daniel said, O king, we are not careful to hear you in this matter. Our God whom we serve is able to save us. But even if he does not, we want to still let you know we will not bow to you. Hear this, if you don't bow, you will not born. Faith comes by hearing, but it works by speaking. If you don't speak, you will not take. You can only take what you have spoken. You can only take what you have declared. I heard Reverend Simeon of Olabi say, only those that declare will clear. What you don't declare, you will not clear. What you don't declare, you will not do what? Clear. Do you want to clear your blessings? You must declare it. God said, declare now that thou mightest be justified. Only people that declare are permitted to clear. Hear me? Anytime you make a declaration, you put to an end the oppression of your enemies. Anytime you make a declaration. Anytime you make a declaration. Your declaration is seen as a decree. You say, thou shalt decree it in, and it shall be established. Thou shalt decree it in. Thou shalt decree it in. Thou shalt decree it in. Let me give you this testimony and we'll rise up to pray now. My friend, J.B. Isong, his name is John Boo. So, the mother was working in Ministry of External Affairs and she was due for promotion. And one man intentionally said, as far as I'm here, you will not cross. Meaning she will not be promoted. Then we are still, we are just, we are just entering final year, first semester of final year. So he said, Tony, there's this issue. My mother is due for promotion. And if she's promoted, she will be posted outside this country. And this man has been sitting on it. So he said, the moment we finish class today, I'm following you to that place that people normally go and pray. So we went there. Around 5 a.m. we went there. We called his name. We said, be uprooted. Be uprooted. In the name of Jesus, be uprooted. We sacked the man in the spirit. That same month he was sacked. Guess what? The next person that came, the first file he treated was the mother's file. The mother was promoted. So she collected her arrears. Do you know what? You will collect arrears today. 
Any devil sitting on your blessing will surrender today. Rise up to your feet. I have given you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversaries will not be able to resist nor gainsay. If you had opened your mouth wide, I should have long subdued your adversaries. I want you to pray now whatever you want to possess that you know that forces have been limiting. Should I say this to someone? Where you are now, you are overdue for a change. You are overdue for a lifting, for a breakthrough, for a turn around. You are overdue for an expansion. You are overdue for your laughter. But hear me, whatever is behind the delay, the spell will break now. I want you to lift up your voice. Whatever is contending with my possession, give up now. Surrender by fire in the name of Jesus. Whatever is contending with my change of story, give up now. Surrender by fire. Whatever is contending with my breakthrough, with my laughter, with my turnaround, with my open door, give up now in the name of Jesus. Any evil hand. Any evil hand. Any evil covenant. Manipulating. Delay my life. Break by fire. 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 Leandro Moro Shekateria. Ezikete liado rakatados nekoteko lebre di shesozinanda ila dudu resho naga rakata ligo brekete risha goda lilata la sunde hila broche klobrende kite lizuzu nagele rene sheketeria rekoteri anda galeko tabalarata la porede shekolara diaba Break, break, break by fire. Whatever is saying no to my breakthrough, to my turnaround, to my change of level, break by fire. Lekatori and the Kesete, Zizo Nakatalia, Retula Bele Kuteniada, break. Any power resisting my possession. Your time is up. I prophesy by fire. Swell up and die. I command you smitten by the vengeance fire of the Holy Ghost. Satanic barriers. Satanic manipulation to limit my possession. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say to you, I'm talking to somebody here now. You are not too old for that blessing. You are not too old for that blessing. You are not too old for that blessing. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this month of August, God will wipe your tears. God will wipe your tears. All the mockery that men have given to you, God is turning it into a testimony. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any witchcraft personality that suspended your marital destiny in their coven, I release you right now by fire. 
wherever they took your name to let fire catch the altar let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn the altar whoever is that strong man that has vowed you will not cross this level of blessing oh you strong man north south east and west swell up and die if you are saying amen say better amen all eyes closed all heads bow you are here you are not born again your first possession is possessing your salvation you want to make it right with jesus put your right hand on your chest as i'm doing now and say this prayer after me lord jesus i come unto you today i know that i'm a sinner forgive me wash me with your precious blood i reject sin i reject satan come into my life be my lord and be my savior in jesus name i pray if you pray that prayer with me wherever you are come right now i want to pray with you put your hands together for jesus if you pray that prayer with me god bless you put those hands together for the lord come 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 god bless you